Hey, hard like Charlie here. Uh, today, subject of our video is going to be how to change out some old uh, worn out dry belts out of a vintage JVC KD15 stereo cassette deck. Now, I've already gotten into it, but uh, I just wanted to show you how easy it is. We're just going to pick it up from about halfway through. I'll show you how to put it together rather than show you how to take it apart. Uh, but to summarize taking it apart, just take the bottom panel off. That's this panel right here. Four screws off it pops. The top panel is this panel right here and it was just two screws and it lifted right off the top. So uh, the, uh, the other uh, items that we removed were the uh, knobs off the recording level on the, on the front panel and then uh, one screw on the bottom, one screw on the top and then the, the uh, face plate came off uh, had a little ground wire on here that we pulled off the, the front too so we just set that aside um, it was pretty quick getting into this and then the uh, the only other things that we had to remove uh, basically uh, were the uh, were the cover plate on the inside of the of the cassette compartment and then the little base plate underneath that in order to get that off and th each of these were held on with three screws three screws on the bottom of this and three screws right here both these pieces came right off so it was really nothing to get into like I say 15 screws and you're into it so uh, the first belt that we took off was was this uh, the counter dry belt and counter belt that goes right here on this goes right here on this uh, the shaft right here that turns the it's got a little worm gear turns the tape counter and it just <coughs> goes right down here to this uh, to this wheel. So this is the old belt and uh, I bought my belts from uh, turntables.com or turntablebelt.com I guess it was. Turntable needles. <laughs> They're going to appreciate that plug. Okay, turntablenedles.com uh, in Corvallis, Oregon. I have dealt with them before. Uh, they're great. They've got a great site. It's easy to find what you need. Great prices. They ship it to you quick. Um, good people. Give you everything you need in the, in the kit to go with it. So uh, that's uh, Turntable Needles in Corvallis, Oregon. You can Google it. Um, it's really easy to find the belts you need. They've got a great uh, a great finder on there. So anyhow, these are the replacement belts. Um, obviously this is the small one here. And you can see how that's kind of stretched out. Maybe you can, I hope so. I'll put it on here and maybe you can see. Anyhow, the old belt, uh, gotta go. Okay. So to get that on, you just there's a little gap back here behind this little wheel so it just goes on there and then just string it on down put it right on over that pulley and then hopefully it'll kind of straighten itself out here make sure you get these on and you don't get them all twisted up like I just did there we go Okay, so we make sure that 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 this belt is is straight on the pulley and and not kinked around, and just put it on, and there we go. Oh, that's much better, much much better. Okay, now for the other belt, it's on the other side of this mechanism. And we just turn it over. And uh, you can see that belt runs right 
right on this track here. So, we'll sh see if we can get that one off and we'll pull it off that way. Pull it through here. Okay, to get this, uh, to get the, the large drive belt off, we're going to try to remove this bracket right here holding this little flywheel on here. And that's just held, or there's a screw right in here. It's got a little spring hooked onto it. So what we're going to do, just see if we can remove that s screw, pull that screw out, and that should enable us to be able to get that belt out of there. You just got to be careful when you're pulling this stuff out that things don't go flying around because a few places anything thing like mine once a spring hits the floor it could be gone forever. Okay so we pulled that out and that's all that was was just a little screw and a spring back there behind it holding this plate on. So there's the old belt. I don't know if we can see it but there it is, and uh, here's the new belt that we're going to put on, and once again, it's noticeably shorter, so both these belts were stretched, and this thing should run really nice once we get the new belt, get the new belts installed here. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Okay. So we'll wiggle this thing through. Uh, it just goes back in the way it came out. Okay, one little note about uh, when you put this back together and you put this um, screw and spring back in uh, on this bracket that holds this flywheel on. You may not be able to see it, but anyhow, it it needs to be. T um, the spring and the screw needs to be screwed in just right, tension just right, so that this flywheel is just just right, just firm, and it can either be loose, and the flywheel will be um, the flywheel will be a little bit loose. It, you can feel it, and if you get it uh, too tight, you'll see this little piece of metal, this, this piece of metal here bending, and uh, but anyhow. If you just if you just rock it back and forth and just kind of just kind of pull it back and forth like like this, you you'll be able to feel it um, if it's got any slop in it. So you just take and screw this down until until there's no slop or play left in this on this flywheel shaft. Pretty simple, straightforward. So to get this back in, we just turn this around so that so that it will go plonk right back up in its little cradle here um, these wires go down in around this plastic housing <coughs> there were four screws in this <coughs> in this cassette mechanism assembly and they just screwed right into the to this uh, plastic uh, chassis frame so we just set those back down in there and there it is get our little screws put the four screws in and uh, then when we get the four screws in we'll put our our uh, back plate on Okay, I took a little bit of maneuvering. Remember um, that the uh, the screws holding this uh, cassette mechanism in are are blue. They're kind of a, a metallic blue uh, color. So if you go in there looking for which ones to pull out, they they're kind of a blue colored uh, metallic screw. Now we're getting ready to put this little face plate or back plate on in the cassette compartment 
uh, got it positioned back in in the in, in where it goes. Um, this takes some very very small screws, and um, you really, if you're going to do any of this stuff, get yourself a miniature set of screwdrivers. Um, if they have a little bit of magnetism to them, um, that's even better. Uh, but anyhow, they're really handy for doing the small stuff. Um, so we'll put these other two screws in, and then we'll put this little uh, this little cap plate on. Um, goes something like this. And then we'll put the uh, face plate back on and the covers and uh, it's all done. It's that simple. Okay. Um, before I put this cap on here, I just thought I would say real quick, now's a good time too. Uh, if you want to clean out any of any of your, your deck, this happened to be a, a nice clean machine. Well, there isn't a lot to clean on it, but if you want, now's a good time to take a head cleaning swab. It's these chamois swabs. You can get these on eBay or uh, elect electronic supply houses. And I get, put some head cleaner on it and just lightly clean over these uh, uh, recording and playback heads. Really cleans it up nice. Probably can't see it, but anyhow, it's a good time to do that. Also, if you have a head demagnetizer, now's a good time to do your demagnetizing. We'll do another video on, on actual head cleaning uh, for uh, stereo cassettes and also for video decks. Anyhow, we're ready to put this little cap back on on the face plate and get it back together. Okay, so uh, I cleaned this plate, the back of the face plate off and just uh, made sure that this little ground wire was back on there. Just plunked it right down. It's, uh, it's uh, screwed on by one screw on the bottom, one screw on the top. So, just put those in and uh, We just about have this back together. You can see how easy it is working on these old machines. Um, it's not that complicated. P people should not be intimidated. Um, we're doing this, you know, without a manual. It's fairly straightforward. It's not like we're getting into electro into the electronics really. It's just mechanics and. That's the main thing that, that uh, goes out on these old cassette decks and even boom boxes is, uh, are, are, are the, the rubber belts. And they're fairly, fairly easy to get to most of the time. So anyhow, all we have to do is put on the bottom plate, the top plate, the knobs, and we'll be rocking. Okay, so this... Um, so the top plate just has these three little these three little tabs that hook in on the, on the back side here and um, so they just hook in this thing plunks down two screws on the top here uh, screw them in do the bottom plate and uh, that's all there is to it. Very, very easy. Well, this bottom plate had um, actually had four screws. They were the the little feet screws that assist in holding the the bottom plate down. But uh, again. Just uh, just plunks right down on there. One main screw beside the, the little feet. 
This is a really nice old deck. Um, I bought it on eBay, and uh, the guy got ready to ship it to me, and then he wrote me and said, hey man, you might not want this, because uh, I just tested it. He said, when I listed it, of course, it was, sounded great, but man, um, got ready to ship it to you, and I thought I'd better check it out one more time, and he says, are you sure you want it? I said, yeah, it was a good deal. I'll fix the belts on it. So, so there we have it. This is our vintage JVC KD15 uh, stereo cassette deck. Whoop! One more touch, I guess. We got to put these. Uh, gonna put our knobs on. And uh, I guess this is the hardest part of the whole thing. So. <laughs> of course it is. Anyhow, I'll get this figured out and I'll get right back to you.